Hi, this is Dr. Bruce Keneal in Jacksonville, Florida, and I am going to talk with you today about snoring and sleep apnea. As you see on our first slide here, you'll see our typical apple, which is a sign of health, and the bite out of the apple, which is about our health center dentistry and treatment of TMJ over the years. Well, in recent years, we have found out that we in dentistry can treat obstructive sleep apnea and snoring with an oral appliance, which is an offshoot of a TMJ appliance. So to our logo, we have added a moon and stars. So let's get started. Do you have obstructive sleep apnea? How are you going to know? Well, probably the number one symptom is snoring. Uh, most people who snore have the start of obstructive sleep apnea. That doesn't mean everyone who snores has it, but a high percentage do. Another thing is your spouse may see that in the middle of the night you are gasping for air. You're breathing and then you hold your breath. Your belly's going up and down, your lungs are trying to work and then you're taking a big breath and then you may start holding your breath again. That is not healthy. High blood pressure. They say a cardiologist's office, 50 to 80 percent of their patients have obstructive sleep apnea. So if you have high blood pressure, there's a good chance you have obstructive sleep apnea. Falling asleep during the day or trying to stay awake, very common to be tired. If you're not getting your oxygen during the nighttime, you're gonna get tired during the day and you're gonna to, going to want to nap. Nap is fine if you treat it like Einstein did. He'd take a 20 minute nap every day. He did okay. But if you take a nap more than 20 minutes, you're gonna be using up your REM sleep, which isn't healthy, and then you're not gonna sleep well that night. So napping, the minimal, minimal is fine. But if you feel like you want to take a nap, that's a good sign that you're having obstructive sleep apnea. Low energy. You don't have oxygen to your brain. You have low energy. Acid reflux. That's very common with people with obstructive sleep apnea. And tooth wear. You see the picture in the middle of this page. If you have teeth that are worn like that, yeah, it might be a bite problem. It might be TMJ dysfunction. There's a good chance you're bringing your jaw forward during the night time to try to open up your airway and you're grinding your teeth. We can fix all that. And the lady in the bottom there really taking you on driving. People who have obstructive sleep apnea have a greater accident rate than drunks. That's not good. So for your own sake and for those around you, you need to be aware of sleep apnea Okay, so what is obstructive sleep apnea? Well, the picture on the right kind of tells the whole story. You see this person's head, he's laying down with the mouth and nose facing up um, and the eyes are to the left and then, you know, to the, to the right is the rest of his body. The blue arrows show where you breathe. The arrow to the left is breathing through your nose the arrow to the right is through your mouth. Well, those arrows only go so far because there's an obstruction. The arrow on the left goes and dangling, it, it's kind of pink toward the end, and then there's this oh, flesh-like extension that comes down. That's your uvula in the back of your throat. You lose muscle tone, and get, your throat gets clogged, your airway is clogged, and you can't breathe. The tiny arrow is going through your mouth and where it touches at the tip is the tongue. Well, you see way in the back of the tongue, it falls backwards. It loses muscle tone as you get older and closes down the airway too. It is normal to breathe in and out. Every few seconds you take another breath. If you have repetitive pauses, a pause in the medical profession means you don't breathe for 10 seconds or more, then you have the start of obstructive sleep apnea. 
technically, if you have five of these 10 second obstructions per hour, you are now in the obstructive sleep apnea mode. And the more you have, like if you have more than 30 per hour, once every two minutes, that is severe. Then you're talking about real life problems, as bad as death. The airway has become narrowed and blocked in the back. That's obstructive sleep apnea. So what should you do? If you think you have some of these system, symptoms and you want to be treated, well, you first need to have a sleep test done. There's two types of sleep tests. One, you can go to a sleep doctor, a physician, and do an overnight sleep study. That's been the common one over the years. Uh, in recent years, they've come up with a home sleep test, which isn't quite as good but it's adequate in the beginning. The insurance companies are more inclined to direct you into the home sleep test initially. And if you're severe enough, recommend you have the uh, overnight sleep study. So you can have your primary care physician refer you for a sleep study. Um, you can even call my office. We have the home sleep test in the office and we can uh, test to see whether you're a candidate. And if you are a candidate, we would send this information to a physician who's a sleep doctor and have him score the test and then go from there of whether you need to have an overnight sleep study or you can just go on for treatment. Uh, so these will test for snoring, your breathing patterns, movement, your heart rate, and oxygen saturation. So let's say you have obstructive sleep apnea. What is the treatment? Untypical, most medical treatment is with uh, drugs these days. You go to the doctor and they write a prescription for oodles of things. Well, sleep apnea is not treated with drugs. It has to be mechanically treated. CPAP, which stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, is the original treatment invented in 1981, actually by, I think, a doctor in... Uh, uh, Australia who used a vacuum cleaner to uh, pump air into his patient to uh, help them out. It, it's, it's a lot more sophisticated today and you can see on those top two pictures um, patients wearing uh, the mask and nose pillows that are available to treat obstructive sleep apnea. This is considered the gold standard. The problem is a percentage and it could be a high percentage of people who are supposed to wear a CPAP to treat their symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea and snoring will not wear them. Therefore, dentistry got involved and that's how I got involved. I actually have obstructive sleep apnea myself. I skipped the CPAP and I went to their oral appliance. They're FDA approved. There's no hoses, no masks, no noise. You're comfortable. You put them in your mouth when you go to bed and then you wake up in the morning and take them out. Um, there's about a hundred different appliances actually to pick from. And if you like to travel, you don't have to carry the little suitcase around with you that a CPAP would require. You can put it in a little tiny case and put it in your pocket or your purse and move on. So that's the two main treatments. There are others that aren't as successful such as surgery but these are the two main treatments for obstructive sleep apnea and snoring. So that is the story about obstructive sleep apnea. If you're more interested, you can go to our website at www.caneeldental.com. We have a whole section dedicated to the symptoms and treatment of snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. If you would like a free consultation or even have a free home sleep study, give us a call at area code 904-731-2162 here in Jacksonville. And we'll be glad to uh, meet you and take care of you. Well, have a nice day and we hopefully we can see you soon.